Hey, poker people. Welcome to an actual coaching session with a smart poker study podcast listener named Julio. He responded to a contest I ran for one free hour with the caveat that he allows me to cut up our free hour and post it to the world. So this is the first of five parts total. If you want to see part two, just click on that link directly above. Now, we start this video in the first part. We begin discussing the areas that he wants to work on, particularly uh, three betting a little bit more and not being so sticky with those big over pairs. Uh, we then dive into his uh, 44,000 hand database to kind of get a look at what type of player he is. And it's pretty indicative. His stats tell us right away he's a tight, aggressive player. And it's been working for him because at the micro stakes, uh, he's a winner, right? So the tight aggressive nature is working. And I show him my uh, within Poker Tracker 4, my leak tracker stats report. And that's what I use to kind of get a gauge on my different students, um, where their stats are at and where their potential problems lie. And then we start diving into some of those statistics numbers. All righty, y'all, let's get to the video. Cool bees. Well, Julio, thank you so much for joining me and congratulations on uh, winning this free hour of coaching. How you been? How you been doing? Thank you, Sky. Yes, I'm uh, very, uh, very excited of uh, this uh, coaching session. Cool, cool, good. Well, I took a look through your hands already and I've, we have a little over 43,000 hands, but before we get to your stats and to some of your potential leaks and things, what areas do you want to focus on? Well, I think that... Uh, I have a leak on my uh, three bet uh, pre flop range. Okay. I, uh, because um, in uh, in my tables of no limit five, I used to play in um, at uh, eight eight poker, and uh, in that tables I have a range of three bet of four percent or, or something like that, and that's I think that um, for a good player poker player. That should be about 10, uh, sorry, 10, uh, 7 or 8. And I want to, uh, to improve that. Okay, so you want to increase your three betting to 7 yes. or 8% total. Okay, perfect. What else? What else do you think you need, pro or need help with? Well, for example, the other day I have an, an over pair. I have queens. And, um, and uh, I was playing no limit uh, 20 which is out of my bankroll, but I detect a fish in that table. So uh, I think that it was a good opportunity to play against that, uh, that fish. And uh, she uh, shops uh, uh, pre-flop and I call with queens. And uh, uh, that fish has uh, uh, kings and I lost uh, a box in that, uh, in that hand. And I think that I uh, sometimes I overestimate my uh, my hands like that. So overplay big pocket pairs? Yes. That's... Okay, gotcha. Oh, I, did, I forgot to ask, can you see the screen right now? Yes, yes, I can screen? see. Okay, perfect. So this is a Word document where any kind of coaching, coaching session I do, I always take notes as we, as we go. If you have a pen and paper right now, that's totally fine. Keep taking notes. But I do this too, just for a record for me as well, to, so I know that what we discussed, you know what I mean? Yes, I have a, a notebook with, with a pen. I'm uh... Great. I'm okay. uh, taking down on the, those things. All right. So when it comes to overplaying big pocket pairs, um, does that also extend to like hitting a good top pair on the flop? Do you have a hard time folding those as well? Like ace yes, king yes. on a king high board? Yes, yes. Okay, gotcha. Good, good, good. So we might address, um, we'll definitely address the three bets today, possibly those big uh, over pairs and, and big top pair hands as well. Anything else that you know you need to focus on? Well, uh, recently I was studying a GTO playing because there is a, a Spanish poker player, uh, he's called Ceros Poker, and uh, he has a web of, uh, of poker and she tells uh, his strategies and uh, he's using Pio Solver. And um, there is a lot of things like, uh, uh, if the board is paired, you must uh, bet one third of the pot. And if the, the board comes uh, tall, you must bet um, uh, whatever it, it is. And, but I think that this is not an, a correct uh, way to play at uh, micro stakes. What stakes does this pro play at? 
Uh, no limit thousand. Uh, oh, no limit two thousand. Geez, yeah, it's probably not. Uh, taking those strategies directly probably isn't what you want to do at, at the lowest of stakes. Have you tried implementing it and testing it out or you're just wondering if GTO can work for you in the micro stakes? Yes, I, uh, I have implemented that strategy, but uh, there is not a big sample of, uh, of hands and uh, my conclusions are not really um, uh, accurate. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Well, um, I won't be covering anything GTO throughout the rest of this lesson, but let me let me tell you something right now. Have you heard of, and I've done some podcast episodes with him. Have you heard of Peter Carriters Clark? Yes, yes. Um, um, bio versus population. Exactly. Yeah. Um, when it comes to when it comes to GTO, um, he uses uh, GTO solutions, like you said, to exploit. Uh, non GTO play. So if you want to, um, and just like you said, PIO versus population, if you really want to start utilizing GTO, this is how I would recommend doing it. Like the, the way I coach and the way I play, I'm all about exploiting my opponents. But if you can use GTO ideas to see where your opponents are not playing GTO, that's a great way to exploit, uh, exploit their tendencies. You know what I mean? Instead of using the GTO solutions for yourself, exploit those who don't. And that might be a better way to kind of test out and start using GTO solvers um, or GTO solutions in the micro stakes. That's what I've been doing. Some of his PIO versus population has been very useful lately in my game. I, I'm not fully incorporating everything just yet. Um, I'm kind of going through them and working things out for myself, you know? So instead of using those solutions from that Spanish pro, maybe um, tweak it and use those solutions to exploit the non-GTO users. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. I, okay. uh, and I also think that the, that is uh, a best option for me. Okay, cool. Yeah, so keep giving it a shot. I mean, I haven't been utilizing GTO and I haven't even, I've never even used Pio Solver myself, so I don't really know how to do it or how, how to utilize the software. The only thing I've ever heard is like various podcasts, some articles and stuff, and then Peter Clark's yes. Pio versus Population. So I can't give you too much guidance on GTO there, but I like the way he's approaching it for sure. Okay. All righty. So let's see here. Well, those are some, some good areas. Anything else that, b before we get to uh, your numbers and stats and hands and stuff? Mm, no, that's all. Okay, great. Yeah, so what I do here with this sheet is I track your stats as you play through the sessions. Normally, I do, st um, I do these uh, sessions, these coach coaching sessions every two weeks. And it gives most players a chance to put in anywhere from three to 5,000 hands, which isn't a big sample, but it's kind of, it's interesting seeing how your stats are going up and down based on how your play is changing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of these stats with you that I gathered from your statistics from the hands that you sent me. So this is the database that you sent me, 43,900 hands, which is a pretty good size. It gave me a lot of stuff to go through. And I found a few different areas that you can definitely focus on. And three betting is one of those. So we'll cover that in just a little bit here. But okay. um, so you've seen this report in Poker Tracker 400 times, right? Yes. Good. Um, all of the stats that I pull are, you know, you can find them up here. But what I do is I create a special report and I'll show you what that looks like right now. And what I'll do is after the session, I'll email, I'll export this report and then email it to you so you don't have to build it on your own. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Um, I call it my, let's wait for, okay. I call it my leak tracker stats report. Now, if you've ever used Leak Tracker, it looks at your current stats in relation to all of these kind of important stats that um, Poker Tracker kind of gauges or it knows what the average winning player stats are and it sees where your stats fall in between. So with each of these, like CBET Flop, for example, you can watch a special video on the stat and it'll tell you more information about how to use the stat and where winning players, where their stats fall between, you know, like between 50 and 75%, that kind of a thing. Well, for my report, I have all of those stats in Leak Tracker up here, and then that's where I'm tracking all of these here. So if you see CBET on the flop, it says 60 to 83% is your average winning player's range. Now, 
if your stat falls outside of that, that's not necessarily good or bad. It doesn't mean you have a leak or you're playing even better than the pros or anything. It's just an area that you can look into um, to see if there are any extra problems there. So that's why I use these numbers in particular because it's a good it's a good overview of how you play uh, how you play your poker sessions. So if we take a look up here, um, your currency one is one hundred and four dollars. Good. Your big blinds per one hundred is four point one. That's great. You're a positive poker player. You know you're not a losing player. Some of my students, I mean, I'll see negative twelve big blinds per hundred, negative twenty big blinds per hundred as their overall win rate for forty or a hundred thousand hands. So you definitely. Uh, Oh, and one thing I forgot to, to ask you about in the beginning of this video, you've only been playing since March of 2018, right? Um, yes, yes. Good, good. I, I mean, I, that's... I, I, yes, I began to play uh, almost one year ago, yes. Yeah, March. that's awesome, man. And already within just a year at the micro stakes, you're turning a profit right here, um, which, which that's a really good sign. I hope you feel good about that because my guess is 95% of players at the micro stakes are losers, you know? Yeah, yes, I I have read about that. Yeah, yeah. And I can't, you know, validate those stats. That's what I've read as well. And that's what kind of I experienced at the tables. It feels like a lot of players at the micros don't exactly know what they're doing and they make bad choices. But obviously, because you're positive, you're making good choices. But of course, we can always improve our game. You know what I mean? So yes, yes, yes. I'm really glad you're interested in coaching here. Well, at 4.1, positive 4.1 big blinds per 100 hands, you are definitely making money, which is good to see. Now, your VPIP and PFR, 2117, that's good. You're a tight aggressive player, which is what I think you need in order to make money at the micro stakes. You have so many overly loose and aggressive and so many loose passive players that that tight aggressive style gets maximum value from, over, um, from all of them. Now, how did you develop this style? Where do, where do these numbers come from if you've only been playing for less than a year? Have you been doing a lot of studying, reading books and stuff? Yes. I, um, first, I discovered the, the blog of Black Rain. Mm, perfect. Uh, do you know? Uh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Well, well so uh, I uh, purchased the, the first book uh, he, uh, he wrote, uh, Crossing My Mistakes, and uh, then I... Uh, Recently, I bought the, the second book uh, he has wrote, the, uh, the Micro Stakes Playbook, I think uh, it's the name. Mm -hmm. And well, these, uh, these ideas are all from these, uh, these books that uh, uh, he always is recommending a tag, tag style of playing. Um, and uh, he also has uh, uh, uploaded his preflop ranges. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm... Uh, playing basically uh, uh, with uh, that strategy. Perfect. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. And it's obviously working out well for you. So um, let's see here. If we keep going down. Now your three bed is at 3%. That is a little low. Yes. So what we're going to do, and later on we'll get to this in a little bit after we finish all these stats, we'll get to increasing your cutoff and button three bets in order to beef this number up a little bit. So get it to somewhere between five and six or so. You don't, um, what I recommend, so you said you wanted to get it up to between seven and eight percent, and that's great, but you don't want like a crazy big jump right now. You know, start a little bit at a time. And when it comes to adding aggression to your game, I always recommend adding it into the latest positions because if you get called, at least you have a little advantage with position post flop. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we'll dive more into this in a little bit. Um, all these other stats right here, I'm not going to discuss every single one of them for you. Actually, if there was a stat like, for example, flop AF, do you know what that means? Um, yes, I is um, the times you you bet. Um, I don't know in, in English how it is say uh, yeah. DVD by the, the times you call. That's exactly it. Yeah. Flop AF is, um, yes, bets plus raises divided by calls. So it's a sign of how aggressive you are versus the calls that you make. And a 2.6 means that on the flop, you raise or bet 2.6 times for every one call. And that's definitely a good percentage right there. Nothing wrong with that. Um, you're well within the, you know, the range for most winners. AFQ is good and stuff. But just in case, um, if you don't know or want to figure out any more about stats, you go to configure the stats menu. And then once they come up, you just search for it here, find it. Once you click on a stat, it gives you the description as well as the formula. Mm. Uh, you know, 
just for any future stats if you're not exactly sure, you know. I, I was looking for that. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure thing. Good, good. All righty. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new to apply to your game. Step into action with your very next play or study session. Click either one of the links here to watch the next video or to check out the coaching session playlist. If you want me to be your coach, visit smartpokerstudy.com coaching.